Everybody good? I mean, how many real good? You know, I, I am, I, I am, I don't know. I just felt something about today. I, I, I felt something very strongly, even specifically as just, I just felt the Lord led me to put those songs in the midst. And it's not about a feeling. It's, it's, it's about a relationship. It, it is about a faith that trust and believe God. I, I'd, I'd invite you to stand with me today as we I read the scripture together. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. I, I, there's something about this word this morning. I, I believe this word. I'm back on the be on blessed us. Uh, uh, sermon series that I've been in since the first of the year. And uh, right now I don't see any end in sight. I hope that's okay with y'all. If not, just exact, it just act like you're enjoying it. the best thing you ever heard. Dave. <laughs> I'm playing. I, it is, I hope it touches your heart. Today is something that I, I really believe God has for us. And um, there's not one person in this room that doesn't like to eat physically. I told you I'd use physically. You, you, you know, some, some of us eat more or less, and I'm going to tell you where I'm at. You know, uh, uh, you probably already know that. I, 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 I am glad God gave me the ability to enjoy food. You know, I, and one of the, you know, I, I, I didn't have this issue to hit me. The smell went away, but when I had COVID back last year, uh, my taste did not go away. Thank the Lord for that. But my smell did. Some of you maybe lost both. And, but uh, anyway, my smell came back pretty quick. You know, there's nothing like eating food that doesn't taste good or that does not smell good. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How many of you already got, mm, yeah, how many already uh, got your steak knives out, spiritually speaking? You've been, you've been cutting some, a word already this morning. It just, oh, through the songs that we even shared. And Come on, how, how, many got, how many on your palate this morning, something is, is tasting really good in your spirit? How many, how many is just making you want some more? You know, you can go buy a bakery and smell it, and it will draw you in. You walk in there, you, you know, and you see in the mall or in the uh, downtown, you, you smell those pralines that are, that are being made. And they said, free samples, and you cannot pass it by. And you walk in, and the reason they give you free samples is so you can buy $100 worth of pralines. Oh, uh, maybe not that, but they're not cheap. But they are good, I'm telling you. And you're not worried about what it does to your body. You're just, you're just enthralled and pulled in because of the smell. Let me tell you, spiritually speaking, when you get around the presence of God, it'll draw you in. There's a smell spiritually. There's a taste physically, or spiritually, that will draw you in, and you can't get enough. It's better than a fine dining steakhouse restaurant. And I love, give me some steak, New York strip, T-bone. I don't care if it's red meat, bring it on, honey. I'll chomp it down. Now, I like a good steak, yes. I've cooked some good and I've cooked some bad. And some of the best are round and they're called hamburgers. Oh, come on now. You got to get women on this. Come on. You got to stay with me now because I'm, I'm going I'm to teach, teach you something, share something. But the Lord's got a word. Notice what he said, verse 6. I want you to say it aloud with me like you mean it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Say that again. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And here's the result. Say it with me. For they shall, will be filled. <laughs> Glory. If God says you're hungry, he said, I got something for you and I'll fill you. Father, thank you this morning for this word that you have put in, in uh, my heart during the study and brought different thoughts, brought different resources. Lord, uh, you, you, you are this word. You are the word. And so, Lord, we want to come in and partake of you today. In Jesus' name, God, I ask you that anointing, come in and cleanse us of every sin. God, everything, we want your righteousness. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat after he gets through. No, I'm, uh, glory, you may be seated. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. 
I'm going to tell you watching me this morning, you're blessed. We're just blessed. We're just stinking blessed. Remember the word blessed in the Greek, it means happy. So I'm happy. That's, that, that is a literal uh, uh, word in the Greek. It li- means literally happy. So the Lord is saying here in the Sermon on the Mount, happy are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Okay, you know what makes me happy? Driving down the road and the red light's on. Now, some of y'all just, it just went, Ew. but when you ride down Savannah Highway at a certain time of day or at a certain time of night, and you see the red light on there, the Krispy Kreme. Somebody had just a, a shouting moment right there. Come on now. And you take those things, and they give you napkins with the box. You know why? Because they know you ain't going to wait till you get home to try one. It'll make you slap somebody. I don't know. It, <laughs> it, it, it's incredible. And they're soft and gooey and warm. And nothing like that with a big glass of milk. Am I really making sense to somebody this morning? Stay with me. What I'm saying this morning is there's a better light that's come on than the Krispy Kreme light, and it's the light of Jesus Christ. And he's got a he's got something for us that will change. The donuts don't last for forever. That's but but God's word will change your life and it'll make you happy. It's like we're all happy when we get through eating a meal and and it's just good. We probably overate with a oh, I shouldn't eat that much, but it just makes you happy. It makes you happy. And those that cooked it made you happy that somebody else was happy about what you cook. But the word of God lets us know that people who are poor in spirit, people who realize that they are bankrupt before God spiritually are happy people. People who mourn and repent over their sin are happy people. People who allow the Holy Spirit to produce meekness in their lives, they are happy people. But in the same way as these beatitudes we've already covered, the one that God is saying to us today is that people who hungry, who are who hunger and thirst after righteousness, those are some crazy happy people. The question is, are you hungry and thirsty for him? And if you've lost your taste and you've lost your smell for God, that's where we got a problem. That's where problems come in of our lives and we stop eating. Because what happens, we get, you can't eat when you're full of something already else. So this is, this I would declare to you this morning is one of the most important verses in the Sermon on the Mount. Because without this intense desire for righteousness, a person as a believer will not pursue a deeper relationship with God. They're just going on a past experience. Past experiences are great and thank the Lord for the blood, but we need an up-to-date relationship with God. And so what happens when you're not eating you don't pursue a deeper relationship with God or you try to develop the rest of the character traits that the Lord describes here in the entire Sermon on the Mount. And so the foundational, we all know if we don't eat physically and drink water, we're going to die. We cannot function. That's the way God created us. And the foundational requirement for all of us, godly living men and women of God, is to hunger and thirst for righteousness. I want to remind you what Moses said. Remember when Moses said, as he was leading the people of Israel, he said, if you are pleased with me, talking to God, he said, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. The sons of Korah that wrote Psalms 42, and we'll come back to this one as well. He said, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, oh God. Anybody here, you panting for the water of God this morning? So I, I, I want to deal with three questions today, three thoughts, simply in questions to help understand what God is saying to us about being hungry. And if your hunger level, you know, I, and I understand we all have gone through sickness at different times, and sometimes as a result of the sickness, 
there is a less of a hunger, a desire to eat, and that is as a result of some type of virus or sickness inside of us. We don't eat uh, normal uh, food normally at that time because we don't feel like it. And so what is revealed in the natural can also reveal the spiritual. When there's some spiritual disease and there's something that we've been, that we're sick inside of us spiritually, it'll cause us to pull away from God. And one of the biggest things that does that is sin in our life. And so we want to talk about three questions. The first thing is that big word called righteousness. What is righteousness? Glad you asked. Righteousness is the state of being righteous. <laughs> there you go. When you add the N-E-S-S, it, is, it becomes the state of. So we're going to define righteous. What does it mean to be righteous? Righteous means absolute, complete correctness and perfection in thinking, acting, and feeling. Thinking, acting, and feelings, it refers to our mind, our will, and our emotions. And since God is righteous, righteous literally means that which is consistent with the correctness and perfection of God. So, Here's the question then. Have we done everything right? Did we all think right this week, the right thoughts? Have we been perfect, not just this week, but for our lives? How many of you are righteous? Ooh, there's no hands. Now, before we go a little bit further with that, I want you to understand a scripture that says this. You know, kind of makes us feel, okay, Lord, I'm lost. And what I'm, God, I, I'm not righteous. How, how can I be right before you? Because it's perfection of who you are. Well, let me, let me just remind you, Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 says, there is none righteous, no, not one. Well, I'm with everybody else now. Does that make us any better? Not really. Go into second verse, second Corinthians 5, 21 says, here it is. For he made him who knew no sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So you are a sinner. You have nothing. You have no ability to gain righteousness. You can't act right, think right, do right. You cannot be right and definitely not a deadly do right. Now, for those who didn't understand, that goes way back. And some of y'all might not have got that term. It was a character. So, we're miserable. What can we do then to be right with God? That verse says, he became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. Come on, amen. So there are two types of people on the earth. There are the righteous and the unrighteous. You're one or the other. The righteous people have accepted God's atonement on the cross. The unrighteous have not accepted Jesus. It didn't say how right you were, how good you were, how perfect you were, how many mistakes or sins and all that. It's not based on that. It's based on that one act on the cross, Jesus Christ. That's how you have your ability to sit in this house and say, I am the righteousness of God. That ought to just fill you up right there. So now, let me ask the question again. How many of you are righteous? See, you can raise your hand now because you got the answer. That's the right answer. It's not what you did. It's what he did. <laughs> so righteousness is the state of being righteous. Righteousness is a right standing with a perfect and holy God. Not right acting before God. And there are two ways you can become righteous. You can be perfect in everything you do, or you can accept the perfect one. Which one do you want? We become righteous because of what Jesus did on the cross. And I want to give you, once again, a practical definition of righteousness again. It is right standing before God. It is right standing before God, not right acting before God. Everybody got that? God didn't save me based on my right actions. God saved me based on his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Grace is not about my right actions still today. 
But his one act on the cross, he said, for by grace are you saved, not because you're so good and got all that right, but it's that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. First Corinthians 1.30 says, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So because of Jesus, come on, get this, come on, get you some of this. Because of Jesus, I'm righteous. I'm holy and I've been redeemed and God loves me. He's everything that we need. He has been made to us wisdom. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. He is our redemption. And whatever it is that watching me today here in this room or in your home today, whatever it is that you need from God, you'll find it in the righteous one. So how does someone who is a spiritual beggar become right with God? Now, I, I want to help you out with this. Because of grace, understand, Jesus didn't die so you could act better. He died to redeem a helpless, hopeless, sinful, wicked soul. He died to redeem us or buy us back. He died to cleanse us from our sin you cannot act better apart from the grace of God. And then when God cleanses you, you have the ability and the love of God that it'll change from outside, from inside out, I should say. It'll change your life. So once again, there is a righteousness that'll make you happy. Can I ask how many happy people in the house? How many's happy, happy, happy? Come on, amen. So it is imputed. That's a big a word that are credited. God has credited righteousness to you. I like when my bank account is credited stuff and not debit. Well, it's debited because I do that. It's according to what I spend. But, you know, credits are always good. It puts stuff in your spiritual bank account that you didn't earn, that you didn't expect, that you didn't know how it got there because you just knew how, we're, how you were. I knew how I was, but all of a sudden God says, clean slate. You got all my glory. You got all my righteousness. You got all my goodness in there now. Now, now go with that. I'm happy all the day long. Come on now. So there's a righteousness that'll make you miserable. It's called self-righteousness. You try to be right, correct, and perfect before God by your actions, and you'll be miserable the rest of your life. It doesn't work out. You receive his righteousness and you'll be happy. So it's right standing, not right action. We are not righteous once again by our performance or none of us could make it. We are righteous by his performance and he made it. Happiness comes from being in right standing with God. Can anybody here just shout a moment and say, thank you God for making me righteous this morning. Come on, amen. Wow, ain't God good? So that takes me to the second question. What does it mean to hunger and thirst for righteousness? Good questions you're asking. See, hunger and thirst are two of the strongest natural impulses that we have. Now, we don't understand that to some degree in America. Well, I say most of the country doesn't, but there is hunger and thirst in this country. Most of us do not understand what it means to be really hungry and thirsty. Because here, here's idea. Here's our idea of what it means to be hungry. I normally eat at 12 o'clock and it's 12.15, I'm starving. You ever heard that? Or I heard your kids, they just got through eating and said, what's, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, mother. Your kids ever eat you out of house and home, the old Satan? <laughs> There's something about them. You can't fill them up. They're growing. Well, for that matter, most of us, we're starving. I'm starving. What's for dinner? Well, I, I just want to remind you of something. We don't really know what starving means. We probably could all go without, some, oh, come on, that's another story. But you understand a third of the world knows what hunger and thirst is. Hunger and thirst are, is a life and death matter. Food and drink are the absolute necessities. We agree with that. We can't live without them. But spiritually speaking, righteousness is an absolute necessity as well. You cannot live without it. You cannot live before God without righteousness and holiness. And that's why he makes us that. And that's why Jesus chose these words. Jesus is perfect, so these words are perfect. And the good news is there is a righteousness that will satisfy your hunger and your thirst. 
And the bad news is there's a counterfeit self-righteousness which will not satisfy you and, and, and destroy you. So I want to tell you about the righteousness of God and how to hunger and thirst, what it means to be hungry and thirsty. Now, if your stomach is growling today, uh, you know, physically, you know, you get to eat physically in just a little bit. But I pray every one of us has got a spiritual stomach growling for God that says, God, I need more. God, I need more of you in my life. Understand righteousness. We hunger for it. But understand, we have to understand there comes a disparity uh, or a driving force within us to not only receive the right standing before God, but what God is saying here is also to maintain that relationship with him. We could all look back at a day when we say, hey, I gave my heart to Jesus that day or that night or that Sunday or that's whenever it was. But the question is, what's happening right now? Are you still hungry? If I eat breakfast by lunch, see, I'm a three meal a day person. I'm looking, I'm thinking, okay, hey, it's time to eat. See, most of the time, it may be not always what we're feeling and inside. We go by time schedule sometimes. Well, it's six o'clock. We, what, what's for dinner? And we try to decide what's, what's for dinner. Yeah. Give you a case in point. When, if you're ever going out to eat, you know, you ever got in the car and said, hey, where do you want to go? I don't care. Where do you want to go? I don't know. What's... What's down the road? I don't know. I don't, yeah, where do you want to go? And then the big one comes. <laughs> Cheryl will say, we are not leaving this parking lot until we decide where to go. You ever hit that? You ever though thought and understand it this way? You don't have to wonder what you're going to eat with God. He's got enough for you. And he wants to feed you his word today. And his word is who he is. And it's his character of who he is calling us to be. And he said, he that hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. So the end result is filled. But, but this beatitude is not just how you get in, but it's also how you live successfully in the kingdom of God. You not only hunger for righteousness to come into the kingdom, but you continue to hunger for righteousness once you're in the kingdom. So before and after. Righteousness is a person. Say it with me. Righteousness is a person. His name is Jesus. And right standing with God is not found in a performance. It's found only in a relationship with him. I want to take you to scripture. We all know the scripture, but I, I want you to see this. Matthew 6.33. Would you turn there? It's up here on the screen. But the word says, but seek first, say it with me, but seek first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. Then it says, and all these things will be provided for you. In other words, when we seek righteousness, when we hunger after righteousness, you know what you're actually doing? You're hungering after God. So the word says, Blessed are those, happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. What it's simply saying is, happy are those who have such an insatiable hunger and a thirst for God, knowing that when we hunger after him, he will fill us. Anybody here want to get closer to him? Amen. So when we seek righteousness, we're hungering after him. I love this scripture, Psalms 42, 1 and 2. We looked at it at the beginning of the message. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? And then John 7, 37, Jesus said, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come on. How many got some belly full of Jesus this morning? <laughs> How many want it to be flowing, flowing, flowing? I love even what the scripture says in, in Ezekiel, the prophetic a vision that Ezekiel had concerning seeing the waters coming out of the throne room of God past the altar. And, and it says that it, it just kept growing in intensity and depth. Finally, it was a river that could not be uh, just walked through. It had to swim in it. And it says that everything those rivers touched, it brought healing. When you are hungry and thirsty for God and those rivers, as Jesus said, are flowing out of you, flowing in you and out because it's, we got to be vessels that, that the word flows out of us into people's lives as well. But he said, everywhere that river touches, it's going to bring healing. That ought to make you thirsty right there. So see, understand that 
It's John 6, 35, he said, I'm the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Why? Because you're filled up. See, the principles of the Beatitudes brings us into the kingdom, but they also teach us how to live successfully in the kingdom once we get inside the kingdom. And as a child of God, we're in the kingdom, but there's got to be more. It's a kingdom of God. And this beatitude, it's a gate into the kingdom, and it's the road you walk on once you're in the kingdom. It's the gate in, and it's the road you walk on afterwards. So, in other words, God is saying, don't ever stop being hungry. Don't ever stop thirsting, because after being saved, we still get hungry and thirsty for God. Because let me tell you, once you get saved, it doesn't mean that everything is right. You're right and ready to go to heaven, but there's still things in us that has longings for this world. And God says, you got to counteract with that. You can't hunger. See, you still got a spiritual hunger in you for other things. God didn't take away the old man. He just put the new man in you. And there's a war going on. There's a war for food going on in you, spiritually speaking. And we still get hungry and thirsty. And so it means hungering and thirsting, though. If you're hungry for God, it means you're thirsty for him and sanctification, which simply is being set apart for God's use. Because let me tell you the types of people that are in the church of God, the house of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. I hope you're getting this. But he said there's wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. He said, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, which means set apart and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So you get saved, but God says, I want to use you. God wants to use you. Well, I I don't know what to do. God says, I do. Just let me use you. So there's got to be a hungering and thirsting to be set apart for God. It's not just fire insurance that you get out of hell free. (laughs) But it's a part of leaving the kingdom right now. So see, this goes on. Are you hungry to do the works of God? Come on, let me say that again. I want you to, are you hungry to do the works of God and, and to serve him? That's also hungering and thirsting after righteousness. There should be a hunger and thirst in us that continues for God even after we got saved. That sets you apart for God, for him to be able to use you. Just as water is necessary for life, so God and his presence hungering for him are necessary for our spiritual life because to stop thirsting for God is to die. So we cannot allow anything to take away our hunger to knowing. We cannot be distracted by the things of this life, by by the world's pleasures, by worries and needs and successes and attractions. They can choke out your hunger and thirst for God and they can rob you of, of your walk and desire and the discipline needed to pursue a deeper relationship with God. Come on, I want to teach you this stuff. I, I'm getting it this morning. I want to get it in my spirit. You've got to keep having a healthy hunger for God or all this other stuff is going to be like a, a spiritual billboard telling you, hey, come on, you want this. I mean, every day you're, you're, you are called to subvert yourself, to, to, to lean in other directions apart from God. Flesh is battling spirit. Come on now. There's a war going on. Every day you get attracted by this or you get pulled by this. You watch the, the you turn the TV on in less than five minutes. You'll see something that's trying to pull you in that direction. Well, if you're not driving that car, you are pitiful. If you're not drinking this here, then, oh, come on now. You you just got to try it. What they don't show you is those with their head over the toilet puking their guts out the next day. Well, you got to have this. You got to have that girl. You got to have this way. You got to have that. You got to have that guy. You got to walk with that particular guy for you to have that standard. Or you got to have that kind of job. You're being pulled, 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 pulled. And your hunger is just getting bigger and bigger because that's what you're feeding. Are you with me this morning? But God says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness or God, they will be filled. (laughs) Jesus shared, remember when he shared the story of the parable? There was four different type of ground that they fell on, some along the path, birds ate it. Some on the rocky ground, it didn't have root, and so it didn't last long. When problems came, persecution, it fell away. 
third ground was some fell among the thorns, represents those who hear the word, but it's crowded out by the cares of this life. Can I, can I, can I just be blatantly honest with y'all? I hope I have been already, but being in this church or listening to me live right now online does you nothing if you don't feed it when you walk out of here. I can't be your spiritual daddy every day of your life. Come on now. I can't be your mama. You've got to take the authority in your own life. Come on, I'm telling somebody this this morning. You've got to take responsibility for this book right here. The reason we're sick, the reason we're dying spiritually and we're feeding on other stuff is because we've been pulled away by itching ears and we see the billboard of this world and, and it pulls us in and, and we, we want to we wanna eat of it. Oh, that sounds good. Well, come on, Adam. That fruit looks good. And, and Jesus, God said, you eat of that, you're going to die. Die. Satan said, ah, you ain't going to die. Because of their disobedience, they were pulled by the billboard of, of, of the commercial of the good fruit. There's a lot of good stuff that looks good on the outside, but it has a demonic pull to it. Hear me. Come on, I feel this this morning. I feel this right now. You make a decision to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You make a decision that I'll say no to the devil. You make a decision right now that says I'm not going to just, just take just the word that pastor tells me on Sunday morning, but I'm going to take it home and I'm going to read it. I'm going to study it. I'm going to grow in it that I can know when, that, when the devil attacks me that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Come on now. If all you're getting... It's just what I'm telling you, and you do nothing else. It's like it's passing, thrown on the wayside. It's thrown on the thorns, and it's thrown on the rocky ground. Because when problems come up, the Bible says it'll choke out the seed. I'm giving you seed this morning. God is sowing some seed inside of you. Your hunger and thirst demands it to be fed, demands it to be filled. And so what kind of hunger and thirst have we got? If you're hungry more after that, that girl than hungering after God, there's a problem there. If you're hungry more after that guy, I'm, I guess I'm talking to people ain't married. I hope I'm talking to people ain't married. Come on now. However, you got to hunger after him. If you're hungry more for, for the friends and going out and doing the fun stuff, let me tell you, it always has a hook to it. Woohoo, fishy, fishy, look at this pretty worm. Are you with me? You catch me this morning? Come on now. Not everything that looks good out there is good. It can destroy your life. But Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The real goodness is found in him. Come on. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. It is those that are blessed. Let me get hungering for God. It's hindered. And it can be destroyed by those worries and those deceitful things of the wealth and money, lust for life's pleasures, and a failure to trust God and remain in a right relationship with him. But you can change all that today and say no more. Last one in closing. What does it mean? To be filled. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what it means to be filled. You know what it means? Sit down at the dinner table where it's either in your house or in a restaurant. Or a place called a buffet. Some of y'all getting convicted right now. And you sit there and you eat. And you're talking. You ever heard the statement? Don't eat with him. Don't talk with your mouth full. You ain't got time for that. You got to keep on eating because it's good. And you're gorging yourself. Because it's good. You still got half a steak on the plate. Oh, you're full already, but you got... Now, I know I'm, I'm meddling here. I get that because I'm, I'm speaking about me. 
but it's just so good that you don't stop. Problem is, your gut's already saying, no more. Had enough. I love the statement of my precious mama. If I've heard her say this once, I've heard her say it so many times. Cheryl already knows that, what I'm going to say. She says, there's always room for dessert. If my mama says it's right, so I'm okay. I can eat, eat, eat. But you pass a cheesecake with blueberries on it in front of me, it's as good as gone. I love it. That's what it means to gorge yourself. That's what in the Greek, filled means. He that hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. When you eat spiritually, every part of your body spiritually is changed. Body, you are gorged with the presence of God. It's coming out your ears, it's coming out your eyes, it's coming out your fingers, you got it, you feel it. Your gut just grows spiritually. There's a fortitude that happens, the strength returns. There's a life that comes up inside of you because you've been fed with the very presence of God. God says, gorge on me. And I will fill you. Come on, stand with me. The Bible says in Psalms 107 verse 9, for he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Jeremiah 31 14 says, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. You remember when Moses, once again, he asked the question, let me see your glory. You see, Moses knew that your glory, God's glory, is what you're famous for. <laughs> it's what he's good at doing. Michael Jordan is famous for what? Basketball. Tiger Woods, famous for? God said, you want to see what I'm famous for? I'll show you what I'm good at doing. And the Bible says he made his goodness pass before him. Can I tell you this morning... That if you're hungry and thirsty, God will make his goodness pass into your life. How can, you know, you know, nothing else will ever be able to satisfy you. Nothing in this world, nothing material, no money, no house, no job, no relationship. If you don't have yourself filled with the presence of God. So how can you be hungry and thirsty and filled at the same time. You know how? Because God created you with a bottomless spirit. <laughs> and that means he got to keep pouring it in. He's got to keep pouring in. God is infinite, so there's no end to him. As his God is infinite, he can fill your bottomless spirit. These beatitudes are divine proclamations of truth. Happy are those who hunger and thirst after God. It's the gate into the kingdom. It's the road you walk on once you're in the kingdom. And if you're in the kingdom, this verse is for you. If you're not sure in the kingdom, this verse is for you. If you're hungry to be right with God, this verse is for you. And God will fill you with his righteousness and his goodness. Please understand, well, I, I, I'm not right enough. Can I tell you, there is no saint without a past and there is no sinner without a future. So my word, God's word to you this morning, stay hungry and thirsty for God. Amen. I'm not going to ask who those are that loosened their belt once you got through eating. Spiritually speaking, whew, that was so good today. God, that was just, God, I, Lord, I, I, you ever walked out of service and didn't really want to talk to anybody because you were just so full of God? God, I'm just hungry for you. God, I'm just hungry for you. 
want you to just take a few minutes. And I, I just want you to simply say to him in your own way, God, I'm hungry. Would you feel me? Come on, let you hand to the Lord and just say that. To him.